At the University of Washington, scientists agree that today's cutting-edge research is possible because of yesteryear's giants. And had I ever met Trevor Kincaid, he would have scared me, he would have intimidated me. Trevor Kincaid was a turn-of-the-century zoology professor at the U. He discovered dozens of new plant and animal species. I come out of more of an engineering background, and I am always impressed by the biologists that know the biology of every living creature, plant and animal. Tom Daniel, a UW biology professor, highly respects Kincaid's contributions, which include saving the state's dying oyster industry and creating the Friday Harbor Labs on San Juan Island. Daniel says Kincaid's trailblazing groundwork paved the way. It was building an understanding of the natural world. And to this day, that's what we're still doing. We're trying to understand the natural world. Today, Daniel is exploring the natural world in ways that Trevor Kincaid would find unimaginable. The Daniel Lab is trying to unravel nature's secrets of movement. So I'm really interested in sensory motor control of living creatures, mostly insects. High-speed photography helps analyze how moths navigate in flight, but that vastly oversimplifies what's going on here. Daniel's team has also created the technology needed to peer inside the moth's brain. Super thin probes which record how nerves react to all sorts of stimuli. Right-ish, left-ish? Right-ish. Right We're flying some moths in this wind tunnel and ultimately we'll be testing different odors, um, introducing it into the wind tunnel and kind of mixtures of different odors and see how the moths respond. I think one of the things that drives my research program is both understanding how nature has solved the problem of movement. It does it from molecules all the way up to whole moving creatures, and it solved the sort of engineering problems of movement. So that really drives a lot of what I want to do, is just understanding how nature solved hard engineering problems. His wings have deteriorated a little bit as well. Possible real-world applications of Tom Daniels' research seem restricted only by human imagination. We're really interested in looking to nature to help us design new moving things, new robots, new interfaces to moving systems, new ways in which we might listen to a nervous system and, and control a robot or assist a human. Heady stuff for sure, yet it's a team that blurs the boundaries between students and staff. Hands on, absolutely, <laughs> yep. Did you notice if this was a male or a female, John? Because is it totally science fiction to think that you could have recording of a nervous signal of a human controlling a remote device? I can tell you absolutely not science fiction. Absolutely doable today. In a bit quieter setting, down the hall and through this door, one of biology's pioneers still reports for work every day. Here's a nice little guy. This yeah. is a high altitude fur. Estella Leopold is Professor Emeritus, a biologist who is one of the university's most esteemed environmentalists. A member of the National Academy of Sciences, she is devoted to the preservation and stewardship of natural places. And these are spores, aren't they pretty? Dr. Leopold's expertise is pollen, the microscopic dust that plants spew into the air. Pollen grains range from about 10 microns to 150 microns, which means that they are about a thousandth of, of a, an inch. They're very, very tiny. Tiny, yes, but pollen grains provide huge insight into worlds long gone. Dr. Leopold's studies of ancient pollen deposits in southwest Washington, for example, show that the area was once subtropical. This swamp area was much like the coast of Georgia and then has endured, uh, that area of course has endured climate change and the mountains going up, everything changed in the last six million years. One of Dr. Leopold's most notable environmental achievements was her crusade in Colorado to save a place called Florissant. The fossils in Florissant are known worldwide to all the paleobotanists and paleontologists as being the most abundant fossils and the most intricately preserved fossils that we know of. 
The Florissant would have been lost to development in the 1960s had it not been for Estella Leopold. After five years of fighting to preserve it, activists went to court. Just a few more months went by then before Congress acted, making the site a national monument. It took about half a year, but it got it done. <laughs> now Leopold is turning her attention to other issues, including one that affects the entire planet, global warming. Of course, it isn't a belief, it's a fact. Dr. Leopold is mapping the relationship between climate change and plant diversity. She has great concerns about how quickly our climate is changing. Interesting thing about global warming today is that the rate of change as we see it in, for example, in Lake Washington uh, is very different from what we had in the past. The most recent changes as recorded since the 1950s seem to be much faster than what we had going about two million years ago. So we're worried that the rate of climate change today, although it's similar to something we had before the, just before the Ice Age, is much, much, much faster. And that's the concern. The other concern for Dr. Leopold is how to engage today's youth in such matters. She acquired her passion for nature as a youngster, working the family farm in Wisconsin. Falling in love with nature is the important element that uh, we see uh, lacking today. Today she sees kids who are much more interested in their electronic gadgets than the natural world around them. Who's going to preserve it if we don't have young people that are fond of nature? Who's going to fight for it? That's the problem. From the earliest discoveries a century ago to analyzing ancient spores and measuring the most subtle of movements, University of Washington scientists are asking the questions and helping us better understand our complex world. And that is a very special thing, is that really deep appreciation of the world that we're in, everything, the physical and biological, total natural world. There's something precious about understanding. 